Greetings, one and all. Hockey in the American state of Pennsylvania has been under the microscope of hockey fans around the NHL for many years. Whether it's the Broad Street Bullies of Philadelphia during the 1970s, or Sidney Crosby's Penguins winning back-to-back Stanley Cup championships only a few seasons ago, Pennsylvania has seen plenty of success in the hockey world. Considering both teams have only been in the league for half of the NHL's existence, both the Flyers and the Penguins have won plenty of silverware. However, what if I told you that there was an NHL team in Pennsylvania before either of these two franchises? Well, in today's video, we are going to learn more about that team. This is the story of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Pennsylvania's first NHL team. Our story begins way back in the year 1925. The Pittsburgh Pirates were originally known as the Pittsburgh Yellow Jackets before joining the NHL, and they played in the US Amateur Hockey Association. Even though the team had won back-to-back championships, the Yellow Jackets owner Roy Schooley, a former referee, was struggling to keep the team afloat due to personal financial problems. Schooley decided he could no longer own the team, so he sold it to attorney James F. Callahan. After buying his new team, Callahan wished to give his franchise a new identity, so he asked permission from Barney Dreyfus, the owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates baseball team at the time, to share the nickname of Pirates. This was approved by Dreyfus, so the Yellow Jackets became known as the Pittsburgh Pirates from then on. With rumours circulating around the NHL that a new hockey league might be set up to rival the NHL, Frank Calder, the president of the NHL at the time, decided that the Pirates needed to join the NHL as soon as possible, as Pittsburgh had been the first metropolitan area to professionalise the game of hockey in the 1890s, so they would draw a huge interest from a new rival league. The Pittsburgh Pirates joined the National Hockey League on November 7th, 1925, becoming the third US-based NHL franchise and were assigned to play in the NHL's American division, alongside the Boston Bruins and the New York Americans. The new team would mostly be comprised of former Yellow Jackets players, with 10 players on the team having played for the previous iteration of the franchise. However, with the franchise accepted and the players ready to play, the Pirates were ready to take on the NHL. The Pirates' inaugural 1925-26 season was arguably their best, as the team finished with a 19-16-1 record in 36 games. Some notable milestones in the Pirates' inaugural NHL season include defenseman and captain Lionel Conacher scoring the team's first NHL goal, goaltender Roy Waters recording the team's first NHL win, and left-winger Harold Dara scoring the team's first game-winning goal. The team's above 500 record was good enough for a third place finish in the league and a playoff berth, but the Pirates were eliminated in the semi-final round by the Montreal Maroons, who would go on to win the Stanley Cup that season. After a strong inaugural season in the NHL, the Pirates looked to continue their early success into the 1926-27 season and compete for the Stanley Cup once again. However, their sophomore season wouldn't be as successful as their first, as the Pirates finished with a 15-26-7 record in 44 games as they missed out on the playoffs. The 1927-28 season saw the Pirates bouncing back from their disappointing sophomore season, as the Pennsylvanian team finished the year with a 19-17-8 record in 44 games, good enough for third place out of four in their division and another playoff berth. Whilst they would return to postseason action, the Pirates were eliminated in the semi-finals by the New York Rangers. The Rangers went on to win the Stanley Cup that season, marking the second time the Pirates had lost in the playoffs to the eventual Stanley Cup champions. However, whilst the Pirates would struggle to win any silverware that season, bigger problems were happening off the ice. Money was becoming an issue for the team, and especially for James Callahan, the Pirates' owner. After the 27-28 season ended, Callahan was forced to sell the team to Bill Dwyer, an early prohibition gangster and bootlegger, and Benny Leonard, a fight promoter and ex-lightweight boxing champion as the frontman of the organisation. With the new ownership in place and a new supply of cash flowing into the team, the Pirates were looking to reach new heights. Unfortunately, the hockey gods had other plans. The 28-29 NHL season saw a huge drop in the W column as the Pirates finished with just 9 wins in 44 games. 
The Pirates' 9-27-8 record was unsurprisingly not good enough to clinch a playoff berth as Pittsburgh missed out on the playoffs for the second time in three seasons. After such a poor season, surely the only way was up for the Pirates, right? Well, the 29-30 NHL season saw the Pirates have their worst season since joining the league as the Pennsylvania team finished with a 5-36-3 record in 44 games, missing out on playoff hockey for the second consecutive season. This awful outing seemed to mirror the Pirates' off-ice woes as the new owners were also struggling to make ends meet. The Wall Street crash of 1929 and the Great Depression that followed severely impacted the entire league and their owners financially. Also, attendance for Pirates games was down due to no one having any money, and the Pirates owners tried to sell their star players to make ends meet. By the end of their final season, the Pirates were $400,000 in debt, whilst needing a new arena to replace the ageing Ducassine Gardens. After years of financial woes and struggling to make ends meet both on and off the ice, the Pittsburgh Pirates were moved across Pennsylvania and relocated to Philadelphia on October 18th, 1930. Thus ended the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise. After five seasons in the league, the Pirates finished with a 67, 122 and 23 record in 212 NHL games. But regardless of whether the on-ice product was successful or not each season, no owner of the Pirates was able to get on top of the financial difficulties that owning a hockey team carries. Perhaps this was a sign that Pittsburgh just wasn't ready to house an NHL team. Perhaps it was the previous owners that were reckless and put the team in that hole. Maybe the last owners would have got things sorted out if the Wall Street crash or the Great Depression didn't hit. Whatever the reasoning behind the failure of the Pirates may be, one thing's for sure. Pennsylvanian hockey today has a lot to thank the Pirates for, as the first Pennsylvanian NHL franchise helped pave the way for the successful teams we have in the league today. And there you go. That was the story of the Pittsburgh Pirates. What do you think about the Pirates franchise? Was it good, bad, or was it doomed to failure from the beginning? Also, is there another inactive hockey franchise you want me to make an episode on? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.